Hi everyone and welcome to The Nest. Sorry that I'm a day late with this video. I've been busy helping my son with the purchase of his first car. He's about to begin a work term as a part of his engineering studies and has to move to another city to work as a systems control engineer for 18 months. Uh, we're very proud of him and we wish him the very best of luck in his co-op work term. Uh, everything is ticking along at the shop right now. Today, uh, the crate arrived for the Dakota Hawk that is destined for Neil Herman. Neil is our Southwest sales representative who lives in Phoenix, Arizona, and he's going to be inviting any prospective builders and customers into his workshop to experience his Dakota Hawk build. Uh, you can contact him at 602 703 2897 or at southwestflying at yahoo.com if you're interested in uh, coming over and visiting Neil in his workshop. Today's video is pure Algi Yates and his youngster fin build. Uh, Algi shares with us valuable glue joint testing techniques and Algi unfortunately lost a bunch of his uh, time-lapse footage for the actual build port portion but you can follow along and uh, with him as he shares his youngster build with us. So here we go. This is Fisher Flying Products. I'm Dave Hartner. Welcome to The Nest. Our video newsletters provide weekly insight into building and flying our 15 wooden aircraft designs. Plini Motori of Italy is a gracious sponsor of our channel. Polini is the manufacturer of the Thor 250DS. Cozy Carb Ice Prevention Systems is a proud sponsor of this channel as well. Please take the time to watch our videos to the end, as this assists us in the metrics that YouTube uses to rate our channel. Hit the like button if you feel that the content is worthy. We invite you to subscribe to our channel by clicking on the subscribe button and hitting the bell so that you are notified whenever we post our newsletters. In this episode, the fin is basically constructed. Uh, gussets done and all the taper bits after the prep work we did in the last episode. Okay then, so uh, all set up. I put an extra block in here, which I'm going to use a tapered uh, stirring stick and another one just to help push this lightly against the leading edge. There's a method of just clamping. I'll use normal clamps everywhere else. All the blocks have been done. I added an extra piece of uh, laminating material, so it's got a piece top and bottom. Just makes it extra, a little bit of thickness for sacrificial stuff. Uh, it was just wide enough with the one, but I prefer to have that for a bit extra. Minor issue there. So I've redrawn the centre lines. They're all marked up. I've put letters on. The, the annoying factor, one might sort of say, is the two here are not at 90 degrees, so I had to make them individually. Uh, when you first look at it, you think it'd be a 90 degree joint, but it isn't. So we're all ready. I'm now, uh, I've got all the ribs cut uh, with their appropriate uh, tapers on, marked up with the centre lines. The leading edge here has been set up, so the centre lines on the ribs. Uh, match up with the center line on there so that's at the correct height uh, and it's clamped to the block so it will stay where it is generally uh, relatively easy sort of setup at the moment so I'll get it glued so a bit of time lapse as you can see I like to weigh out my resin for the mixing I feel that when I'm doing sort of larger quantities it's more accurate but many people just do it purely by equal volume for the T88. It's uh, horses for courses. You can see I'm just putting glue onto the block faces, the end grain to let it soak in before I actually start clamping it. And I make sure everything's square. So all glued up at the moment uh, all the joints have been glued clamped you can see I've got a lot of clamps going on and you can see I've got uh, metal blocks around they're just holding the ribs flat against the table to make sure everything is absolutely square that way and 
a block and a square just to check everything's upright. Uh, this is only in very lightly, that, that was only in there just, just to make sure that the joint was uh, closed up um, but not crushed up. So keep everything sort of set up as it should be. Remember we want to keep a light pressure to keep glue in the joint, not to squeeze it all out. And the other type of clamp which I've got, which is quite handy, is this little fellow down here, which uh, is for model aircraft. Uh, I've had it for model aircraft, which you just sort of squeeze and, uh, and lock in position. Uh, so you just sort of squeeze it and just push on that back pin and it locks it. Which is really handy for these sort of narrow joints where you want a light clamping force. Uh, I found them work quite well so far. So, uh, on now to, I'm going to put in the gussets and you'll see time lapse on that as I put in the main gussets. The one which I'm going to leave out for the time being is this one because it's going to require uh, some slightly different treatment to the norm because we're going to end up with a curved uh, gusset that's going around and an inset curved gusset at that. So uh, a little bit more complexity and I'll deal with that on possibly the next video. Okay, unfortunately the time lapse of the gussets was lost. So you can see the prep. It's really important, I think, on a fin and rudder that uh, you have the gussets equal on each side because people can see both sides of the uh, fin and rudder. And uh, you don't want that showing through. They do show slightly through the covering, but uh, you want to make it as nice as possible. Okay, to round up, uh, had a bit of a bit of an issue with the gusset here because of the extra material I put into the uh, cheek blocks here. Um, but I got round that uh, and the gussets have all worked out extremely well. I'll talk about this gusset um, in the next episode. So 19 hours total. Right, okay, a little experiment on uh, glue joints to see what happens and why I like to uh, sand and remove uh, glue from the joints, excess glue from the joints uh, before I uh, glue them together. So I've got a piece of virgin wood here so this will be glued to another piece of wood in the normal format T88 on both sides and uh, clamped. I have a piece of wood here where the uh, T88 was applied and then wiped off uh, using denatured alcohol. I've got a piece of wood here where the resin was allowed to dry and then it's been sanded across with 80 grit. There's still a small amount of glue on the surface there but it's just about down to, to uh, basic wood. And then I've got a piece here which has got the glue applied uh, and the majority of it's all taken off but it's got a bit of a gloss on it because uh, that's the way it, it comes out finished. So all these will be bonded together and we'll see what happens when it comes to uh, trying to break them apart. Not very scientific, but it's just an idea to uh, show my reasoning. Well, the result's not what I expected. Okay, so let's test out and see which one's the uh, the strongest and, uh, and weakest. So I think my, the order should go uh, virgin wood then possibly the cleaned with alcohol sanded uh, where the, the uh, epoxy was sanded with 80 grit and then the uh, left unsanded so in theory i've trimmed these down so it's just got the ends there we'll stick it into the vise and what we're looking for really is the glue joint not failing the wood at each end should fail first and then maybe the whole lot split and crack across the middle so we'll just see how it goes so this is the one which is bonded as our normal wood would be uh, resin on both sides have all had resin applied on both sides before the joint was actually closed so let's see what happens yeah that's broken by by the joint there but not on the joint. So, as we might have expected. So this is the one that's cleaned with alcohol. We'll see how this goes. Yep, it's done, it's done the same thing. So the joint hasn't failed. It's 
quite a big joint so in theory it shouldn't fail. This is the one that was cleaned with alcohol so let's see what happens here. Yeah so so far all three have failed the same way and this is the one that was left. So quite unexpected as far as I'm concerned. I was expecting that one to possibly have split along the glue joint but it hasn't. You could try it against the stub there to see what happens. Yep. So quite a shock really. Uh, the T88 has, uh, has managed to keep a really good uh, joint going uh, despite in a way uh, poor preparation unsanded uh, yeah and I, I've got to say that that has surprised me quite quite a lot uh, before we go on any further uh, let's let's try out one of my test pieces so these are the test pieces I use to check the batches of glue shown in an earlier video so these these are this is one of my test pieces and this should break up either side, it shouldn't break on the joint. So. There we go, it, it's failed, but it's failed on the wood, it hasn't failed on the actual uh, joint. So that's a pass, that's what we're expecting to see. That is a passed test piece. Okay, and uh, hope that was of interest definitely surprised me on on the case of these uh, I thought these ones would break like that uh, but I, I was anticipating a shear going where it had been left slightly glossy uh, but hey ho now we know okay following on from the uh, previous uh, failed test which you saw in the last video uh, I decided I'd uh, set things up in the same format as the normal aircraft glue s test. So this is actually one of my sort of test pieces here and the joint length here should be between two to three times the thickness of the material. So I've got a quarter of an inch wide uh, square section and so that should be less than three quarters of an inch and greater than half an inch uh, on the joint. All of them are set up in the correct format for that. So we will uh, do the test. And what we're after is the glue joint should stay fixed and the breakage should be within the wood structure. We'll see how we get on. So here we have the uh, ideal situation with uh, fresh wood glue applied to both sides and uh, as we would expect for our normal aircraft requirement. It's taking a fair chunk of pressure. Actually so much pressure it's actually eating its way across. The wood is actually crushing. This this piece of wood is actually crushing on the on the joint and the wood has failed. The glue joint has not failed in any format there. Uh, so that's a really a good pass. I doubt we can actually get it to break off at all. Yeah, I mean, <coughs> so, so I think we can quite happily say that's a pass. So this next one, I'll put a C on there just so I know. This is uh, one which has been uh, epoxy applied to the pieces of wood, then wiped with denatured alcohol, so cleaned, and then uh, bonded together uh, with the resin being applied to both sides and then uh, squashed. The excess resin has been taken off the outside, we've just been sanded off the outside, as required for all of the tests. And all of these have actually been glued together. The final gluing has all been done with the same batch of glue. So uh, in theory, there should be no differential between any of those. Uh, here we go. 
and that has failed the wood has broken uh, and the, the wood has failed there so again that's a pass so no problem there uh, it looks very close but it has actually failed on the wood not on the glue so that's good this is one where we had the resin uh, has been applied then sanded back uh, just slightly with uh, 40 grit uh, wet and dry and then uh, it's been bonded together so we'll see how this one uh, behaves taking a lot of force again the wood seems to be just curling up at the ends there see, see the wood is just splaying out and this is uh, spruce that's being used for the test so and that's failed just like the first one down the center of the uh, the piece of wood so so far uh, there seems to be very little difference between um, virgin wood it being cleaned or uh, the excess resin or resin being on there being sanded with 40 grit uh, I must admit normally I use 60 grit when I'm doing it just to make it a bit rougher and uh, and bonded in the normal way so let's see how we get on with uh, with one of these this is uh, where the uh, glue was applied uh, cured and then uh, fresh glue put together to, to glue these items together so it's on to uh, effectively uh, untreated uh, resin so s there we go <coughs> that has failed on the joints in point of fact I don't know whether that will show in the camera that is actually uh, got 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 the glossy section where it was actually done so failure now I anticipate that being a failure so just to see uh, what happens I've made up three so here's an uh, of that type and this is why I was surprised in the last test. So here's this one. Uh, that's failed on the glue joint already, and so is that one. So two out of three uh, failed along the glue line. Let's see uh, how we get on with the, the third one. I haven't got made any more of these. Well, this one seems to have a little bit more strength in it. Same batch, same system and this one has, has, has actually taken the bond so we could say going from uh, that that you've got and that's actually that one's actually failed in a acceptable manner so <clears throat> bit unusual don't know why that one should all three of those were treated exactly the same way uh, whether the I just don't know quite why that one should should, should have uh, chemically bonded better. These ones are all showing uh, a shine on the surface. Whether that one was slightly less shiny uh, when the bond went on, I don't know. Uh, but th those are almost a sort of a mirror sort of surface. In fact, I can actually see sort of air bubbles trapped in the surface where it wasn't quite perfect when they were being glued together. So that's the anti well, was reasonably anticipating before might happen uh, that's just showing how good T88 actually is at bonding to itself with a chemical uh, bond but this shows that the surface prep really is important if you are bonding onto onto pre-cured resin and all of these have had the resin bonded on same batch and that was uh, three days ago was when they were actually glued together so it's had full three days to, to fully cure hope that's of interest uh, there are all sorts of other tests that uh, would be carried out and in my past we would have carried out tensile uh, and torsional strength tests on various components to try out a, a scientific format with strain gauges but here we're just using the standard three leg uh, system which is the approved method for testing the sheer strength of glue for a batch thank you for joining me thanks again for watching 
We try hard to bring you interesting content each week. To help us out, please like and share our videos if you feel the content is worthy. To receive the latest info from Fisher Flying Products, click the subscribe button and ring the bell. See you next time in the nest.